He's the oldest of six. He was huge baseball fan, played baseball. Um, when he was 10, he was selected to an all-star team. He didn't feel good enough to play, sent him to the emergency room. And that's when they found out that his kid, the strep virus supposedly settled in the kidneys and just wiped the kidneys out. The first kidney I gave him, he did have a second transplant. This was me. That was the one that Scott had given him. Yeah. I can't really give you a whole lot on the day this, you know, the motorcycle show I was at work, but I do remember, uh, you know, once we got home, I got home from work, we kind of got ready, and we were never really ones to be down in the city very often. It was kind of, you know, prefer the local bars where you know everybody and that kind of stuff, and we'd never been down to level. It was a first, first time thing. You know, I remember before we left, Dad telling both of us to make sure we kept ourselves out of trouble, because we weren't in that local bar. Can't tell you what happened, but, you know, some, something definitely happened there. My wife would sit in ICU with him. You know, they obviously shaved, but in the part that still had hair, there's shards of glass. I remember there being, I don't want to say an altercation between my brother and another, uh, another male in the bar. The next thing we know, the scuffle has kind of done its thing, and that's when I saw Jason standing up from the floor. He, you know, pulled up his pants and showed me a big old honking nasty gash in his knee. They bring the cars up, we're getting in the cars and leaving. That is when the flashing lights are passing us, stopping at the bar as we're pulling down the street. About halfway home, you know, he kind of felt a lump on the side of his head and he said, I got this big old, you know, nasty bump on the side of my head. It wasn't until after they had taken him in um, to look at his knee, they took him down and did a, a CAT scan, and that's when, then when they came back out and uh, things kind of took a turn for the worst. And uh, it was a short time later that we got the call, and it was Nick saying that he had just signed. Where are we? I just signed. They're taking Jason in to, to you know, surgery. And I was like, surgery? He goes, yeah, he's got bleeding on the brain. And, it was tough. I didn't uh, leave the hospital from. The time of the surgery for was probably at least a week. When he finally came out of the coma, it, it was tough for him. It was tough for the nurses and the therapists. And it was tough for us too, you know. One time I left the hospital <laughs> was to go file that report and come back. Um, we drove down, we sat and, and just kind of went over the whole the whole story with all with all three of us with the detective. Um, that was that was it. They kind of took it from there and the next contact I think I really had with Esposito was when we went down to view the videotapes that he had uh, that he obtained from the club. A couple of weeks went by I tried to get a hold of Detective Esposito to find out you know if there was any update what he had found um, left a message no response tried him again no response tried Levitt no response and I know that at one point, and I, and I think it was after Jason passed, he'd called here to see if we still had the clothes that Jason was wearing the night of the incident. So, you know, two, two and a half years later, he's looking for, you know, blood evidence that he could have got by going down to the club that, you know, I don't know what the guy's doing. I mean, I, I tried religiously in the beginning to get a hold of them to find anything out and, and never got never got a response there's there's so many things that uh, you know just I look at them and go well, why didn't you you know why couldn't you find this information out what why, why didn't you do something earlier on I hate to say it, but it's, it seems like one of those things that's um, because you're not, you know, local, maybe things weren't handled as they would have been if, if all of these people resided within the city of Chicago. I, it just doesn't seem like there was any effort put into 
the actual case. Well, I hate to say maybe they wanted to, you know, brush it under the carpet somewhere, but you got to think that at some point. Otherwise, I feel like I would have gotten more response from them if they were doing their job properly.